Devi Garcia makes his Bronx debut, and Aaron Judge hits a home run with three outs in the inning. What? It's the Game Day Show, starting now. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Game Day Show. I'm Derek Lewandowski. Last night, it was tough to sleep. I was so excited after watching that game, watching the Yankees just tee off on the Mets. It's been a while since we've seen the Bombers do their thing. I was really encouraged by the way they swung the bat. When intra-squad games started, uh, pitchers were way ahead of the hitters. I mean, nobody was making contact. I mean, it's always like that in spring training, right? I mean, pitchers are generally ahead of hitters because hitting a baseball is the hardest thing to do in sports. And there's a timing factor that doesn't come back right away. It's different than hitting off of a machine because pitchers change speeds, pitchers put different spins on the ball, and so it's tough to get into that rhythm. But last night, everybody looked locked in. The night before, everybody looked locked in. So I'm feeling good about the way things are sitting as we head into the final exhibition game before we kick off the regular season on Thursday night against the Washington Nationals. But one of the more encouraging things was the way that Jordan Montgomery threw the ball. You might remember a couple years ago, Jordan Montgomery was pitching against Houston, in Houston, and he walked off the mound with elbow pain, ended up having Tommy John surgery. He missed the rest of 2018, missed almost all of 2019. I think he just appeared in two games. And when he came back, his velocity was up somewhat. It was 93, 94, 95. Before he got hurt, he was 89 to 92, basically. So last night, he was definitely 94, 95, and his hook, his curveball, was incredible. He had great command of it. He was breaking it out of the zone for swings and misses. He was breaking it in the zone to get called strikes. He had great command all night, and I think he could be an underrated addition to this rotation this year. I mean, last year, the rotation was pretty good, 103 wins. You know, even without Luis Severino, we managed to get it done. But this year, having a big left-handed pitcher like him who can, you know, pitch deep into the game, who can throw strikes, who can miss bats, that's going to be huge. And you wonder what kind of effect uh, pitching coach Matt Blake is going to have on Jordan Montgomery. Matt Blake is a guy who really gets into the details of the spin rate on the curveball and things like that. And Jordan Montgomery already had a great curveball. So what tweaks is Matt Blake going to make to make that pitch even more deadly. I don't know what he's done to throw harder. I don't know if it's just uh, the recovery from the surgery or if he's made some kind of a change to his grip. But the fact that he's throwing 95 miles an hour, I mean, that takes him up to that next level. So somebody mentioned in the comments that they got him on their fantasy team. Good move, good pick. So what does everybody think of baseball without fans? Uh, in the beginning, I thought it was weird. You know, there's definitely more bat sounds, there's more glove sounds, you can hear guys grunt, you can hear guys yell, but overall, I kind of forgot after a while. I mean, it looks weird on the home runs, for instance, John Carlos Stanton's home run last night. I couldn't really see where it landed because the ball is the same color as the bleachers, at least to a colorblind person, uh, but John Carlos Stanton hit the crap out of that ball, and usually I would just watch for where the fans are jumping to try and catch it. Uh, but I couldn't do that last night. So it definitely changes the experience a little bit. I noticed that the bat sounds didn't really line up with the swing. And that can fill in, and that is your injury. Uh, it's like the truck was having trouble lining those things up. I tried to play the audio broadcast of John Sterling from WFAN and Susan Waldman uh, on top of the game, but it wasn't lined up. It usually is on MLB TV, but last night it wasn't. So. You know, there's definitely some weird things that are going to take getting used to. It's definitely an abnormal season. I'm just happy to have baseball. Okay, so we got the lineup for tonight's game against the Phillies, the final tune-up before the season begins on Thursday night. Guys will be taking their at-bats seriously, but don't be surprised if people kind of just halfway jog out of the box. DJ LeMayhew at second base. It's looking more and more like he may be ready for opening day, but it may still be pushing it. Aaron Judge in right field had the two big home runs last night. Glaber Torres at shortstop, one of the most exciting young players in baseball. John Carlos Stanton, that ball he hit last night still hasn't even landed yet. 
Aaron Hicks in center field, one of the sweetest swings in baseball. Gary Sanchez behind the plate. Luke Voigt at first base. He also hit a home run last night. Brett Gardner in left field, looking like he's going to be our opening day left fielder once again. And Gio Urshela at third base. You notice Miguel Andujar not in the lineup. He was out there in left field last night. Don't be surprised if he enters this game a little late to get a couple at bats. My pick to click tonight, DJ LeMahieu, the machine. Why DJ LeMahieu? Well, he's going to be taking these at bats extra seriously because it's his final chance to get ready for opening day, and he's a bit behind everybody else. I'm calling it two-run home run for DJ LeMahieu in his second at bat. And on the mound, Debbie Garcia. Depending on which source you go to, he's a top three Yankees prospect. He's a short guy. He's under six feet tall, but he throws 96, 98 miles an hour with a great hook. This is his Bronx debut, and it's under very strange circumstances. Ready to roll here in the Bronx. First pitch from Davey Garcia is up and away, and we're upper. And Andrew McCutcheon did not make their way from Philly, though. 1-1. One, 1-2. One. One David's going to give you all the info on Davey. All right, so generally I don't talk a ton through these highlights, but I wanted to kind of discuss Debbie Garcia's start here. So I captured every pitch of the first inning. You can see that he struggles with his command. Also, his velocity is down. It looked like he was mostly 92, 93 towards the end of the inning, which was, granted, it was over 30 pitches. He was down around 90 miles an hour. It looked like his breaking ball was hanging a few times. His curveball, to me, seemed like it was a bit too slow. Uh, he had the same problem that Phil Hughes had when he first came up to the Yankees. That breaking ball was 75, 76. And when you're throwing in the low to mid-90s, that's actually too much of a separation. You need some kind of deceptiveness. I like the way that Clark Schmidt does it where uh, he'll keep it around maybe 82, 83. A.J. Burnett, if you remember, he had a great curveball. He had a very similar you know, speed, 82, 83, with a mid-90s fastball. So I think Debbie Garcia needs to learn to throw that breaking ball a bit harder. You will see a couple of pitches that look like a cutter, maybe a, a, a short little slider. Uh, and those were about 82, 83, but they didn't have much break on them. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to talk, talk a little bit about uh, Debbie Garcia. I'll let you get back to watching. On second and two outs. And the breaking ball is a straight. Makes him 71st in the top 100 for Baseball America. I really like his presence on the mound for how young he is. Very mature. The 3 1. Outside, one. Everybody has to get the reps in and establish themselves on the big league level. Get up here and establish yourself. You're never going to feel comfortable. It's all along the way. 3 1. 3 and 2 for right handed batters. So he is one. Base is loaded. Pitch up and away. So where would you move him? That way. You're always feeling like you're tugging it back over to get it in the strike zone. Two. Routes. Base is loaded. Pitch. Chop to first. Backing up Voigt. He will flip to Garcia. Who escapes relatively unscathed. One run, two hits, bases left loaded. Yankees coming to back. Line drive, a base hit to right field off the bat of Quinn. Scoring easily is Williams. So an RBI single for the Philly center fielder. And it's 2-0 Philadelphia. You're going to see this big curveball just rolling. You can almost see the spin. Yeah, really tight spin on a curveball. That's when you get that bite. And when the spin's a little looser, based on your release point. Ball. Well, you saw right there, that wasn't framed. It happened. It's a changeup, so Gio's way out in front. You can see, even though he got it off the barrel. Boy, that's dangerous. He went through his legs, it looked like. That is impossible to do. I mean, you will never see it. You know, you come to a ball game and you've never seen something. Maybe that's happened before. 
I'm calling it two-run home run for DJ LeMahieu in his second at bat. The veteran umpires, so they were, will reward you if you're a good marksman and you're hitting the spot. LeMahieu with a fly ball, a deep right. Going back, Williams on the track. He'll make the play right at the wall. Just missed. Almost had it called for the second night in a row. So let's explain what happened. The double play ended the inning at a pitch count that was under what they wanted to get Velasquez to. So Girardi looked over Boone and they agreed, let Velasquez stay in rather than sit down again. And he faced Aaron Judge. And uh, Aaron Judge then did this, crushed a long home run to right center field circled the bases for while he stopped circling because he didn't know what was going on because Velasquez just walked up the mound so it does count as a home run here you'll see judge go well, what what's going on here hands out I'll go back to the dugout no no it, it's a home run so he completes his tour around the bases got himself a home run that was the end of the inning on a home run David, a little different. All right, so Velasquez said, I'm done. That's the way to go out. Differently. High fly ball, deep right field. There it goes. See ya, tie game. A pinch hit home run for Mike Ford, and it's 2-2. Tell you, Michael, this kid's for real. Mike Ford did it last year, established himself. You brought up the story. He got more comfortable actually after he actually pitched, but in this ballpark, the way this roster is constructed, a left-handed bat in this stadium that can do that, pretty valuable in my mind. All right, so with that, we're done with spring training or summer training or whatever you want to call it. That was a bomb by Aaron Judge, by the way. That one was crushed. But anyway, there goes my dog, Cece. By the way, say hi, Cece. Say hi to the internet. Uh, I thought Debbie Garcia was underwhelming. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, he was missing with the curveball a lot. It was hanging. Uh, his fastball was not at its peak velocity. I've seen it thrown 96, 97, 98. He was mostly 92, 93. I think he topped out at 93. Uh, he might have had one or two 94s in there, but I didn't see him. Uh, but, yeah, I was underwhelmed by him, but I still think he's going to be a good pitcher. He just needs more time to, you know, work on his craft a little bit. At this point, it's pretty clear, pretty evident that uh, Clark Schmidt and Mike King are more polished as pitchers, as they should be. They're five years older. So, actually, I don't know how old uh, Clark Schmidt is. I think he's 24. Debbie's 21. But, anyway, uh, that concludes spring training, summer training. I'll be back Thursday night to cover... Garrett Cole's debut against the Washington Nationals in D.C. Dr. Fauci throwing out the first pitch. I'll see you then.